I hope you enjoyed last week's Q&A episode on forgiveness and love. Please go back and listen to episode 44 if you haven't already done so. Today's topic is near and dear to my heart because it is about healthy friendships. I'm not talking about Facebook friends because we all know or should know that we don't have 300 friends on Facebook or whatever your number is. When I say friend, I am talking about your tribe, your close-knit group, your inner circle, your people, the ones that got you when life gets tough, the ones that notice what you don't say as well as what you say, the ones that sense that something is off or something is wrong just by the sound of your voice, the ones who don't allow you to give up and are there to pick you up and wipe your tears when and if you do fall. I'm talking about the people that snap you out of it when you're not acting like yourself and tell you the truth even when it hurts them or you to do so. You know who they are. They make you laugh until your stomach hurts. They grow with you and they encourage your growth. And they don't allow time or distance or busy seasons to separate you. They are your chosen family. Those are the people I am referring to and that I call friends. You know, I call my group of friends my true blues, and a few of them are joining me today to offer their perspective in their own voices on the various aspects of friendship and what it means to them. I have been friends with my true blues for a really long time. The range is 10 years to 36 years, and I'm really grateful for the encouragement, the support, the guidance, and the joy they bring into my life. But I didn't do this episode to talk about how great my friends are. I was inspired to do it because I've seen so many, or should I say too many, disturbing headlines about what so-called friends are doing to each other and how they're treating each other horribly. And I've seen or heard about way too many viral videos or social media posts where quote unquote friends reveal things about each other or speak to each other in ways that make you think they're more like enemies than friends. Having people in your inner circle who shouldn't be there or aren't safe for you to be around is potentially dangerous and could literally cost you your life. Your inner circle are people you trust, show your vulnerabilities to, and share your secrets, your fears, your hopes, and your aspirations. It is imperative that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that these people can be trusted with that level of access intimacy, and vulnerability. They know, as the expression says, where the bodies are buried or where the skeletons are in your closet, meaning they know too much about you. And if their intentions toward you aren't good, they could easily manipulate, harm, or destroy you with the information they have. So I'm here today to tell you from my vantage point what I believe your experience with someone you call a friend should be like and to help you determine what a friend is not. Because sometimes, like in school, you get the correct answer from the process of elimination. Now, I understand there is no universal rubric for what works in a friendship, but I do believe you can safeguard yourself from being harmed if you at least consider what I have to say today, and that is my primary goal. Now, you don't just want friends, you want healthy friendships, because healthy friendships are the ones that will go the distance, make room for your growth, and yield fruit that could last a lifetime. The next voice you will hear is my friend, Marsha, who is one of the first people I met at the Catholic high school I attended. Let's hear what Marsha has to say about healthy friendships. A friendship is healthy when there is mutual trust, mutual support of each other's goals, mutual respect of each other's individuality, and when you are allowed to be your true selves with each other and there is no judgment. Thank you, Marsha, for that insightful perspective. I agree with everything Marsha said, but I particularly like the part about being your true self without judgment. I believe everyone needs a safe place where they can let their hair down, be who they really are, and say what they are really 
thinking without being labeled, judged, or mishandled for it. You know, Marsha also mentioned trust, and I believe trust is really important in a healthy friendship. There's a quote that trust is the hardest thing to find and the easiest thing to lose. Trust is so important because it takes so long to build it. Once you lose it, you have to earn it back, and sometimes it never returns. You know, mistrust or distrust creates messy and sometimes catastrophic situations. You may have heard that expression, I trust him as far as I can throw him. That means you don't trust that person when they're out of your sight. You aren't sure what they'll say or what they'll do when they leave your presence. So that expression and the word friend should never be in the same sentence unless you are saying that that person is not your friend because you can only trust him or her as far as you can throw him or her. You know, trust to me is safety. My friends are a safe space where I can share something that's confidential, show them the good, bad, and ugly parts of me and my life. I don't have to try to be perfect around them. You know, they accept and love me for who I am and vice versa. Okay, so the next thing I think that we need to talk about in terms of what should be in a healthy friendship is what I call a give and take dynamic. Uh, friendship, like any other close relationship, has to be reciprocal. It can't be one-sided. You can't lean on that person or ask favors and never return a favor. Always be cognizant of what you are bringing to the friendship table, not just what you can get out of it. You know, my college buddy Kisa is going to give us her take on how we can balance giving and receiving in our friendships. Let's listen to what she has to say. I think in my long-term, you know, relationships, my long-term friendships, I think trust was the main thing and seeing the value in the relationship basically work out that balance. And I don't think it's a complete balance because there have been times that I'm on the receiving and there's other times that I'm making a deposit in the relationships, whether it be a situation of divorce or marriages or celebrations. Definitely, I think the balance comes in in trust in the value and in the friendship. And I found that over time with my really close friends and, you know, family. And as I've gotten older, I've definitely realized the importance of these people. I have had some phenomenal people in my life, and I definitely make more of an effort to nurture the relationships Thank you, Kisa, for your perspective and for your transparency. I really love what Kisa said about being flexible because sometimes you need to be poured into and you may not have much to give in a given moment of your life, depending on where you are or what's going on. You know, but as long as the relational scale isn't always leaning to one side, that can work. Kisa also mentioned that your willingness to invest more sometimes in the friendship is really directly related to how much you value the relationship. I wholeheartedly agree with that, which brings me to my next point. When you value any relationship, you genuinely want what is best for the other person. This is important because jealousy and envy will rear their ugly heads if you cannot handle your friend's growth or success. I want every single one of my friends to win in life, and I'm committed to doing whatever I can to support them and to ensure their success to the best of my ability. Because when they win, it gives me hope that I too can win. God is no respecter of persons, so what he will do for one, he will do for another. And I also understand that if you want what other people have, or if you want what other people have achieved, you need to find out and do what they did to get it. I heard Oprah Winfrey say when she started making money that some in her circle would make snarky comments like, you're buying another sweater? And it didn't sit well with her, but also taught her that everybody can't handle your growth or your success. I'm not saying flaunt or parade your success in front of your friends, but you should feel comfortable growing in the friendship. And when success for you happens, celebrating with them or having them around you without having to worry about shady comments or looks. You can't have the crabs in a barrel mentality around you because you can't rise when crabs keep pulling you down and you'll never get anywhere in life or reach any of your goals that way. 
I'm gonna stop there for today and continue this discussion on healthy friendships in a part two episode. Thank you for listening to today's episode and please look for part two of this discussion with more of my friends coming your way real soon. Bye for now.